All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're going to be looking at phylum mollusca, the mollusks, which essentially is our second last invertebrate phylum that we're going to be looking at. Uh, we break it down into three different categories, and they will be the bivalves, the gastropods, and the cephalopods. So here is just a s assortment of different organisms that will be making up this phylum, but let's get right into it. So first of all, we'll start with the phylum level characteristics. This is the uh, characteristics that all of the organisms should have. Uh, the first is that they're soft-bodied, uh, and then they also have something which is called a muscular foot, which is essentially used for locomotion and attachment. Uh, they have an internal or external limestone shell, uh, a complete digestive system. They're colomates, which we know what that means now. Uh, is essentially, there's going to be space uh, that uh, will be in between their their feeding cavity and the rest of their tissue layers which came from the mesoderm. Uh, they're grouped together because of uh, similar patterns uh, and they development patterns and they live everywhere uh, ocean freshwater and on land okay so the big one here is uh, the foot as you guys can see here are the uh, different organ uh, different levels of organization that we have we have a clam, a snail, and a squid. These are the three classes that we're going to be looking at. These are the bivalves, the gastropods, and the cephalopods. But if you look, they have the same uh, characteristics. They all have some sort of shell, even though the squid doesn't look like it because it's pretty much soft everywhere. It does have a uh, calcium carbonate uh, pen in there that uh, has the foot, and they're, they're soft-bodied. Okay, so the mantle is something, it's essentially the tissue that hangs or covers some or all of the body. Uh, the mantle, we will be looking at the structure of that when we do the dissection on our squids. Uh, they have a shell, even though you might not think of a, a something like a slug, they don't have a shell, but um, most of them do. Visceral mass, which contains all the internal organs. Radule, which is unique to, mus uh, to mollusks. Uh, it's a rasping organ with the file-like teeth. It's essentially used to crush food. And then they have gills, which uh, they use to extract oxygen from water, and they're all also able to filter their food. So here's a unique thing about this uh, phylum. So pause that if you need to to get it all down. Uh, for feeding, every form of feeding is represented by the various types of mollusks, so essentially it means it's going to depend on what the organism is. Some use that radula, uh, where they scrape algae off the surface, and the carnivores can use it to drill into the shells of their prey. So it really depends on what the organism is on how they're going to be feeding. Octopus and sea slugs produce poison to subdue their uh, prey, then use the sharp teeth uh, to eat them. And then filter feeders use gills to sift through the food and the water, so something like the clam will have the current coming through and it's able to sift out what it needs. Okay, so you definitely want to pause that one and get it down. Respiration, how do they exchange their gases? The ones that are in the water are going to be using gills, uh, which extract dissolved oxygen from the water. And land mollusks breathe via adapted mantle cavity, uh, so they're kind of like modified lungs, but we wouldn't call them lungs. Uh, lined with blood vessels must be kept moist for oxygen to enter the uh, the cells. So essentially when you see those slugs, if they dry out, it's the reason why they die is that they won't be able to use their gas exchange anymore. Okay, So here's the general uh, structure. This is a clam. We won't have to know everything on here. We're going to look at the details on what we actually have to know for anatomy in class. So pause that and get it down. Circulatory system, slow or moving sessile species are going to have an open circulatory system, which means that they're not enclosed in blood vessels. Uh, it works through body tissues and open spaces called sinuses. The fast moving ones, more efficient like octopus and squid, are going to have closed circulatory systems. So essentially what it means is they're enclosed in vessels, and it's more efficient because it's going to be able to go directly from one spot to the next and it doesn't have to be in just these big open sinuses. Okay, so pause that, get it down. Nice octopus picture, by the way. Excretory system, how does it get rid of its waste? The solid waste is going to be going through the anus. Metabolic waste, so the nitrogenous waste uh, that's been broken down from proteins, uh, are excreted by nephridia. Uh, it's like the simple kidneys that we talked about when we talked about the annelids, the earthworm. Uh, nephridia removes waste and excretes it to the outside through skin. Okay, so pause that. And nervous system, there's a lot of diversity here, some with cephalization and some without. So the bivalves, which are like the clams or the oysters, 
uh, have extremely simple uh, systems consisting of a couple of ganglia, which is nervous tissue, nerve cords, and sense organs, whereas octopi and squid have more complex systems with cephalization. That's why they're called the cephalopods, and they're able to uh, memorize and learn. Pre-production, again, a lot of different differentiation between the species. Most have separate sexes, and fertilization is external, uh, and the more complex species will have the internal fertilization. So we'll look at some examples in class. Pause that. And just to finish up, just so we have them written down, these are the three main classes, and, and we're going to go into a lot more detail about each one in class. Bivalves, clams and oysters, gastropods, snails and slugs, and cephalopods, the squid and the octopus. So bivalve means two different chambers. Gastropod, gastro is stomach, pod is foot, so essentially it's like foot stomach. And then cephalopod is uh, basically head foot. So kind of weird. Uh, just to, This is just broad. You don't have to copy this down because we're going to look at it in class. But the squid's going to be the big one we look into in terms of an, uh, anatomy. So here you can see it's got a fin. The mantle, chromatophores, which are able to uh, allow it to change colors, which we'll see some cool videos on that in class. Eye, which some of these giant squids, their eyes can get up to a meter in diameter. Uh, suction cups, and then these two long tentacles for the squid. And then internal is a lot of detail. So we're going to be cutting one of these guys open to check it all out. So we'll see this in more detail uh, next class. In the next bit, we're going to see a couple of squid. These are squid. Now, males, when they fight, if they're really aggressive, they turn white. And these two males are fighting. They do it by bouncing their butts together, which is an interesting <laughs> concept. Now, here's a male on the left and a female on the right. And now the male has managed to split his color coloration so that the female only always sees the kinder, gentler squid in him. <laughs> and the males on the <laughs> We're going to see it again. Let's take a look at it again. Watch the coloration. White on the right. Brown on the left, he takes a step back, so he's keeping off the other males by splitting his body, and he comes up on the other side, bingo. Now, I'm told that's not just a squid phenomenon with males, but I don't, I don't know if that's it. Cuttlefish, I love cuttlefish. This is a giant Australian cuttlefish, and there he is, his droopy little eyes up here. But they could do pretty amazing things too. Here we're gonna see one backing into uh, crevice and, and watch, his, watch his tentacles. He just pulls them in, makes them look just like algae. Disappears right into the background. Positively amazing. Here's two males fighting. Once again, they're, they're smart enough, these cephalopods, they know not to hurt each other, but look at the patterns that they can do with their skin. Okay? Just an amazing thing. Here's an octopus. Sometimes they don't want to be seen when they move because predators can see them. And here's this, this guy actually can make himself look like a rock. And looking at this environment, can actually slide across the bottom using the waves and the shadows so he can't be seen. He, does, he blends right into the, his motion blends right into the background. The moving rock trick. So we're learning lots new from the shallow water, still exploring that deep, learning lots from the shallow water. And there's a good reason why. I mean, the shallow water is full of predators. Here's a barracuda. And if you're an octopus or a cephalopod, you need to really understand how to use your surroundings to hide. In the next scene, you're going to see a nice coral bottom. And you see that an octopus would stand out very easily there if you couldn't use your camouflage, use your skin to change color and texture. Here's some algae in the foreground and an octopus. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Now, Roger spooked him, so as he took off, a cloud of ink lands. And when he lands, the octopus says, look, I've been seen. Best thing to do is get as big as I can get. That big brown makes his eye spot very big. So he's bluffing. Let's do it backwards. I thought he was joking when he first showed it to me. I thought it was all graphics. So here, here it is in reverse. Watch the skin color. Watch the skin texture. Just an amazing animal. Can change color and texture to match the surroundings. Watch him blend right into this algae. One, two, three. And ecological and economic importance. Uh, as we know, it's, it's basically a big food source for us. So clams, oysters, scallops, uh, squid, octopus, all used for food. Yummy, yummy.